again, my little yarn of ores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you how to knit a very easy shawl called the Half Pie Shawl. Originally, it was the Pie Shawl, and it was designed by Elizabeth Zimmerman, an absolute wizard, when it comes to mathematics and knitting and revolutionizing the whole process. Now this is, instead of a, a full circle, it is half of a circle. So you're working in rows as opposed to in rounds. Very, very simple. And the increasing involved, it isn't every row, it's every X number of rows. And the number of rows in between each segment or section is bigger and bigger and bigger as you go on. So you don't have to worry so much about keeping count or anything like that. But I would strongly suggest using a row counter or a pad and a pen to keep track of what row you're on. Otherwise, it is a great project for mindful stitching where you don't have to agonize over the pattern. That being said, for the project, I used Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in the colorway of Deep Teal. And you are going to need more than one skein if you want to use the same yarn. By the way, this video is not sponsored. I always just like to let you know what it is that I use if you want to duplicate the results. And so one skein is 482 yards. I did need to go into a second skein. However, this pattern, it's very forgiving in a lot of respects. You can make it as big or as small as you want. You just sort of leave off when you want to leave off. Also, going to be using circular needles. Straight needles will not cut it. You do need a, a long cord for your project. I'm going to be using size 11. Uh, these are eight millimeter needles. Uh, as far as the, the yarn thickness, the size of the needles, play around with it. Have some fun. I'm just letting you know what it is that I'm using. But I would strongly suggest, though, as far as the, the cord length for your project, the longer, the better, because if you are like me, you don't like to have your stitches all bunched up. So I would strongly suggest at least a 30 some odd inch cord, if not longer, that would be preferable because the outer edge, that is going to be holding all of your stitches. And after a while, yes, you have quite a few on there, believe you me. So that being said, let's get started. Okay. Okie dokie. So for the cast on for this project, I'm going to do a long tail cast on. You can do a short tail, really doesn't matter. So get your slip knot. And we're going to cast on a total of eight stitches. So we already have one. And two. Three. Hello. Four. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. Yep. Okay. And then to sort of stabilize things, if you will, I like to knit the first eight stitches just to sort of give them a bit more substantiality. Also, be sure that, you know, I've said this before, be sure that you're not knitting with your, your tail, but you're knitting with your working yarn. Um, it has happened to me, believe you me. So we're just going to knit these first eight stitches, and this is going to be row one. Alrighty. So just going to knit these. And the beautiful thing about this project is the number of increase rows that you actually need to do for the entire thing, about six. Yes, about six rows you're going to be actually increasing. Otherwise, it is all 
knit stitches. It's a fabulous thing. So we're just going to knit these stitches. Very, very simple. And I'm a huge fan of the garter stitch. And if you want to, you could do the stockinette stitch, but personally, I think that this really lends itself to the garter stitch. Just knit every row. All right, there you go. And that is row one. Okay, row two, we're gonna start right in and we are going to do an increase row. Now on an increase row, the first three and last three stitches you leave alone. You don't do anything fancy schmancy with them. It's just the stitches in between. Um, and so whenever you do have an increase row, keep that in mind. And that will create sort of a, a bit of a buffer, a border on either side. And that will become more clear as we go on. So for your increase row, which this is one, going to knit the first three stitches. just as normal. And then we're gonna add our yarn overs, our, our eyelets, um, and that is going to be the increases. Now, so we have these two stitches right here and these last three stitches. So again, don't do anything with those last three. So we're gonna start after doing our first three stitches there, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, and then we've got those last three, but before you do those last three, put in one more yarn over then knit the last three stitches. One, two, and three. So we went from eight stitches to two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So we added three new stitches. Now that may not seem like a lot, but over time we're going to increase even more and more and more exponentially, um, as it were, um, and you'll see what I mean. So right now we're going to go into rows three through five where it's just knit stitches the entire time. Now for those of you that are not familiar with dealing with eyelets and that sort of thing. You just knit them as you would a normal stitch. It's it's nothing painful or traumatic. It just looks a little bit foreign. So as you can see, after those first three stitches, the next one, it doesn't have a little bump on it, just sort of looped over. Now well, you're just gonna treat it like a normal knit stitch. And you only really have to concern yourself with that on the first pass. After that, it's just like every other stitch. So for rows three through five, we're just gonna knit every stitch. And this particular pattern, I would say it's really, it's great for any kind of colorway of yarn. I wanted to use an ombre because I thought it would really lend itself to the shape of the shawl. However, um, really, I would say anything goes. So as you can see, I'm just knitting each stitch normally. See, this is one of those yarn overs that we did. Just go right in as you would with any other stitch and knit each one. See? Easy peasy. 
Now, of course, also, if you want to, you could do a, a slip stitch edge. Personally, for this, I really don't think that it needs it, so I decided not to. But you can do whatever it is that you like. Now, my cord is all wrapped around my tripod here. Bear with me. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're on row four. We just did row three. And so you can see that down here we have these three eyelets right down there. And so I'm just going to keep working normally. Give us a chance to have a little chat. Um, another thing that you could quite conceivably do, not just yet in the pattern, but later on, what you can do is if you want to get creative with different lace techniques, um, a while back I did do a series on random organic freeform lace and sort of a, a knitting lace 101 kind of thing, this would be an ideal project because it's pretty much a blank canvas. You can do whatever you want to it. Um, however, if you do a, a complex sort of lace work, I would not recommend a quick change color variegated yarn. I would strongly suggest using a solid or um, a subtle ombre if you're going to be doing lace patterning. Okay, so that was four. Now let's do five. But I would say that the, the possibilities really are endless to the variations and the, the tweaking that you can do with this sort of pattern. It's very open to interpretation. As long as you follow the increments of the increases, you'll be fine. Okay, so we're almost done with row five. Alrighty, so we have now done three rows of just regular straight knitting. Nothing major, nothing increased, nothing decreased, and my cord is wrapped around my tripod again. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have some basic garter stitch. You know, nothing, nothing terrifying about that, right? Um, now, if you look closely, um, I don't like to just, you know, say, all right, this is how you do it. I, I also want you to be able to read the, the piece a little bit. If you look closely, above this eyelet here, you can see one bump, and then you can see another bump, right? That's two rows on this side. If you turn it over to the other side, above the eyelet, there's one bump. So if you add the one bump on this side and the two bumps on the other side, you end up with three rows, right? Well, that is a way of being able to figure out how many rows you've actually done since the last increase. So one bump, two bumps, you got three bumps. All right, so you have three rows. Well, we are now up to row six, where we're going to do another increase. Okay, and so for row six, let me just get myself situated here, and I'll be right back. Okay, so for row six, to do the increase once again, really what we were doing before, we're going to knit just the, the first three stitches as normal, and then we're going to incorporate our yarn overs. 
So knit the first three. And the reason why I'm being quite so thorough with this is because even though it's a relatively simplistic pattern, the idea of it can be very intimidating, which I understand, which is why I'm trying to be thorough. So I'm going to knit those first three stitches. Now we're going to do our yarn over knit one until we reach the last three stitches. So we've done our first three. Now yarn over and knit the next stitch. Yarn over, knit the next stitch, yarn over, knit the next stitch, yarn over, knit the next stitch, Yarn over, knit the next, and we have our last three stitches. So yarn over one last time, and then knit the last three stitches. There we go. Okay, so now if you remember from before, after doing our increase, we knitted three rows, right? Well, now that we've done this increase, the next six rows you're going to knit normally, regardless of whether it is a, a yarn over stitch or a, a regular stitch, just knit every stitch across for a total of six rows, okay? And then that will be rows seven through 12. Okay, so on row 13, you would do another increase. So I'm gonna do the next six rows off camera, and then I'll be back again, and we will go from there, okay? So again, keep a little stitch count, a little row counter, or uh, pen and paper so that you know exactly where you are. And so for another six rows, just knit, 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 knit back and forth. And I will be back in a flash. Alrighty. Okay, so I just knit six rows. I'm up to row 13. And again, I want to show you the trick that I was talking about before. Now, as you can see, it's already starting to create a semicircle, which is exactly what we want. Now, if you look closely, you can see our little bumps above the eyelet hole. You've got one, two, and three, right? Then on the other side, again, you've got one, two, and three. So that is proof that we did a total of six rows. Okay, now we are up to yet another increase row. And to recap, yep, I'm going to go through it again with you guys, because you know me, I like to be thorough, if nothing else. Okay, so when you reach your increase row, going to knit those first three stitches. Just as normal. There we are. And then proceed to do your yarn over knit one for the rest of the row until you reach the last three stitches. All right, so yarn over and knit one. Yarn over, knit one. and so on and so forth all the way across. And then 
after you're done with this, we're going to have an even bigger segment. In fact, every time it's going to be twice as big. We started with a three row segment, and then a six row segment. The next segment is going to be 12 rows. Yes, indeed. So I'm just doing my yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one. It's that easy. The only thing I would not recommend, I mean, there are other ways of doing uh, increases like a, a make one or uh, a KFB. I would not suggest that, that with this particular project because it really creates a neat eyelet appearance, which gives the project a little bit of a, a lacy appearance. And if you have that many KFBs back to back, I think it would be a little bit tight on your needles. By all means, you can try it, you can experiment, and I encourage experimentation, but just giving you my, my two cents. Okay, we've reached the last three stitches, so before you do those three, yarn over, and then knit those last three stitches. And that will conclude row 13. Just this last one here. There we go. Okay, so that was row 13. Now, rows 14, let me just check my notes here. <laughs> rows 14 through 25, that's the next 12 rows, just knit, 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 um, and keep track of what row you're on, and just knit all of your stitches, you know, knit across, turn your work, knit across, turn your work for 12 rows, and then you'll be up to the next increase. That is how this pattern works. You keep doubling the, the segments, so it would be rows 14 through 25, it's 12 rows, then you do an increase row. Then it is row 27 through row 50. That's 24 rows after your increase. So it's do an increase row and then do a chunk. So it'd be 12 rows, uh, this next segment here. Then 24 rows, then 48 rows, then 96 rows. All the time doing an increase row in between those segments. Okay, so I'm going to do my... 12 rows off camera, and then I'm going to show you how to do a nice stretchy bind off so that it'll be nice and flexible. But of course, you would want to keep going with the, you know, the initial setup of the pattern. So bear with me. I'm going to do my next 12 rows, and then I'll be right back. Okie dokie. All right. So I, I went ahead and I knit all 12 of those rows. And I have my piece laid out flat so you can see it does create a really neat semicircle, half circle, whatever. Um, and the beauty of this is that, yeah, throughout the entire project, you only need six increase rows, like maximum, really. Um, because if you kept going in this fashion, uh, we just did our 12 rows. Well, then the next row would be another increase row. And actually, yes, I did write this all out for you. And so basically what we did was we had our eight stitches, then we increased, then we knit three rows, then we increased, knit six rows, increase. I knitted 12 rows. The next one would be an increase row. Then, by the way, excuse the handwriting. Um, <laughs> so uh, we did our 12 rows, then it would be an increase row. Then it'll be 24 rows, increase row. Knit 48 rows, increase row, knit 96 rows. Now, for my piece that I actually did, I only knit about 48 rows at this point here. I didn't knit the entire 96 because my piece was getting huge, okay? 
Um, now, another technique that I would strongly recommend using in order to get an idea of is the piece big enough is the lifeline um, technique where you use a piece of waste yarn, a long piece of waste yarn, and you run it through all of the stitches on your needle, holding the stitches in place, and then take the cord out because eventually you're going to get to the point where you don't have enough cord and all of your stitches are going to be all bunched up together. It happens. So use the lifeline technique. And actually, I'm going to put that in the description box down below, how you can do that. And that way you can really sort of fluff it out and see, is the piece going to be big enough? Now, right now, I've got plenty of cord. So you can see that it is, you know, nice and fluffed. Um, but right now you would be at the junction of, all right, do you want to keep going or do you want to do the bind off? If you want to keep going, this would be the point to do it. Now, as far as where you keep going, okay, if you do your increase round and then you only do a couple of rows and then you do the bind off, it will be very, very roughly because you just did an increase. The further you go with that segment, the less roughly it will be. If you do the entire segment, whether it is, you know, the, the 24 rows, the 48 rows, if you do the full 48 rows or the full 96 rows, it will not be wavy or roughly at all. Um, but for instance, say you do the increase row. And then instead of doing the 96 rows, or in my case, the 48 rows, um, you bound off after, say, 10 rows or 20 rows. It's still going to be very roughly, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the sort of finishing techniques. Um, I, for this particular piece, as well as for most of the knitted shawls that I do, I prefer to do the sort of stretchy bind off. Um, also down here, I'm going to show you how you can finish up this little center point here. Now I have seen this particular design where you're using a garter tab cast on. However, personally, I do not like garter tabs. Um, you know, it's a way of starting the, the center point of a shawl. Personally, I find them aggravating. I don't like them. So I wanted to simplify this pattern without using the garter tab cast on. So I'm going to show you how you can very easily sort of bring this together and finish it up and make it look nice and pretty. So I'm going to show you right now how to do the sort of stretchy bind off. Alrighty. Okay, so when you're ready to do, to, to do your bind off, it's going to be similar to a normal bind off where you knit these two stitches and then you knit them uh, while you pass one loop over the other. Instead, we're going to be knitting them together. Um, there are, of course, a million and one different ways to do a bind off. This is just one of many. So you knit these two first stitches as you would normally. Okay, and then passing your left needle through the front of those two stitches, like so, as if you were going to knit them together. But technically, it's as if you are knitting them through the back loop, you know. So we're going to knit these two together. like so, and off. And then knit the next stitch. And then again through the front of those two stitches. Knit them together. And off. Knit the next stitch. And then through the, the front, 
knit those two together and off. And you do this all the way across. Now, I would strongly suggest practicing this technique on a sample before trying to bind off your complete project. Practice. Yes, practice is a good thing. Um, you don't want to do this for the first time on your finished project because, well, if you haven't practiced it and you make a mistake, it could it could potentially be disastrous, and we do not want disaster. Mm -mm, no. So I would say practice the technique first on a small swatch to get used to it, then go in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up this bind off off camera, just doing exactly as I have been. And you can see it's got some nice stretch to it. It's very loose. And uh, it really helps with maintaining a nice shape. Otherwise, if you use a regular bind off, it will have a tendency to pucker or to cup. And that's the last thing that you want. So that being said, I'm going to do the rest of this off camera. And I'll be right back to show you how you can deal with this little, this little bit at the, the neckline. Alrighty, I will be right back and I'll show you the rest. Okay. Ta-da! All right, so as you can see, it is not a, a tight bind off. It does have some elasticity to it. Um, and then, so you have your, your last loop here. You would cut your, cut your thread here, pull out the loop, sew in your end, boom, it's that easy. Now, as far as this particular end that we started with, it's really, really quite easy. Basically, we're just going to be sort of sewing this closed. Now, you could leave it open, by all means. If that is what you prefer, you could totally keep that open. So you can see that we came from right here. So I'm going to go into the, the stitch directly across. Now... Let me see here. You know, and you, you can kind of fudge it a little bit. It doesn't have to be an exact science because this is going to be at the back of your neck and really nobody's going to notice. But you can see I'm going underneath those two loops right there. And then go back through this side. And then going through the next one on this side. And then through this side. And there you go. And, you know, you, you can, you know, neaten it up and, you know, make it look a little bit more pretty than I just did. But it brings it together. You know, I mean, if you wanted to do like a bit of a grafting stitch, more power to you. But I wanted to make this as easy as humanly possible. And the idea of doing a garter tab cast on, no, I'm sorry. That is not my Jimmy Jam. Mm -mm, no, um, I am, I'm, not, I'm not down with that. But I think that this works rather nicely. And now the thing is also right now, it does have a little bit of an angle this way. However, when you keep going and you have more increases and more segments, it will even itself out a bit more. So let me show you what I'm talking about. It does angle a little bit, but after you do the next increase, which invariably you will, it does even itself out a little bit better. Okay, so that being said, I really hope that you like this tutorial and that you give it a try like I said, it is perfect for one of those projects where you don't want to have to think too terribly much and you just want to do some mindful stitching um, because, you know, we had 12 rows of just, yep, autopilot, and then it would be 24 rows of autopilot, then 48 rows of autopilot. Just, you know, keep a little clicker or pad and paper handy and you can't go wrong. So listen, folks, 
Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you liked it. And if you did, give a little thumbs up button, please. I always appreciate your appreciation. You know I do. And also, do check out my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I do video game playthrough and commentary. A lot of fun. Would love to see you there, too. And whether I'm doing knitting or crocheting or audiobook narrations or happy mail or what have you, I'm always trying to put out new content, so do hit the subscribe button. And until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired. Stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody.